Hello everyone, I'm Hanan Saleh and I would like to welcome you today on behalf of my group and myself to our ML web. And in this video, I'll be talking to you about virtual communication guidelines. As you all know, since the COVID-19 pandemic started, virtual communication has become the commonest method for meetings and assembly. And this actually put focus on how the meeting should be managed. Guidelines and etiquette had to be followed thoroughly for successful meetings. To make things easy, I've divided the guidelines into three phases, before the meeting, during the meeting, and after the meeting. So let's start off with the first phase, before the meeting. Virtual communication requires a great deal of preparation in advance, so it's mandatory to have proper planning. If you want a successful meeting, you should put a lot of effort in your planning. First of all, the meeting agenda. The agenda should be sent in advance to all participants at least two to three days ahead of time. Make sure that the agenda is realistic, time bound and relevant. It should also include all the required details, such as the topics to be discussed, the roles to be played and the allotted time and also any needed preparation. This will allow everyone to come thoroughly prepared for a productive discussion. The second thing to plan for, and it's also very important, is planning for engagement and participation. So planning for a successful interaction throughout the meeting, this is very important. And all the time that will be needed for any activity should be well calculated. Don't leave anything to chance. Also before the meeting, you should define the meeting norms. And the meaning of the term norms is the expected standards of behavior or simply the ground rules that you will put and should be followed by everyone. And examples of this like keep your mic muted unless you're speaking. Um, also, don't multitask during the meeting. I want you to stay focused with us, uh, for example, to use a headset and things of that sort. The meeting norms should also be sent ahead of time with the agenda so that they will know the rules in advance. One more thing you need to do before the meeting is setting the stage. This includes things like background, lighting, distractions, things of that sort. You should prepare your physical space adequately. And this is in order to minimize background noise and distractions for yourself and others. Also, you should prepare yourself if you want to look good at the end. Well, first of all, choosing the background. This really depends on your preference. It could be as simple as a white wall, which works very well, or maybe you would like a more sophisticated look with a huge library. There are many virtual backgrounds that you can choose from, but try to keep your background simple and yet professional at the same time. Also, good lighting. This is essential and it makes a huge difference. You should always have the light facing you directly and not behind you. Otherwise, people won't be able to see your face and you will not be clearly visible. Unless, of course, that's your intention and that's what you want. But keeping the light in front of you, this is essential. Many of us forget to adjust the camera to a proper level, and this sometimes makes us look funny. Um, the camera, if it's facing upwards, you will see the ceiling. If it's downwards, you'll see the ground. So the best way is to have it just straight forward. If the laptop is below your level, well, try to increase, put a book, a thick book or something under it to make it uh, in the proper position. If you have pets or if you have children, don't forget to keep your space, put the pets away or leave your children with someone. You have to eliminate distractions during your meeting. Well, finally, the meeting is about to start and you have to get dressed or should you? Getting fully dressed or half dressed as many people do is really okay. Both are accepted. But in my opinion, I think it's better off to get fully dressed, just in case. You never know what could happen. 
Don't put yourself in awkward or embarrassing positions. One time, the speaker had to quickly plug in his laptop before it turned off, and he really stood up without thinking. Luckily, he was ready. An important point while choosing the color to wear is to also remember the background that you chose. They should go well together. Also, try not to wear too many patterns and too many colors. Try to keep it simple. Okay, let's have a look at a couple of slides just to see what we've been talking about, um, setting the stage before the meeting, and also to remember that this is what we really look like at the end. This is how people see us. Um, if we look closely, you can see some of the points that we've stated uh, were not really set. For example, you can see um, ceilings, just ceilings, for example, here. Bad lighting, you can see here the light is from the back, you can't see that person. Also here the light is coming from the back. This is a little bit too close to the camera. And on the other hand, this is a little bit too far from the camera. So adjusting the distance between yourself and the camera is, of course, is, is also um, important. This is a fairly good group. You can see a good background with a library, plain walls, library. All of them are facing in a, in a very good manner. You can see lots of plain shirts, whitish or plain colors. You can see that. This is the checked one here with a lot of pattern, maybe it's, it's okay. Um, so this is a fairly good group. Now, looking at this group, I think this is just too, too ready, or maybe it's, it's a commercial for something. Um, all of them just look great. The, the, the background, the lighting, no ceilings, no floors, just all smiling. So I think maybe it's, it's just a commercial. It's good, too good to be true. But uh, maybe this is our goal. We want all to try to, to be like that. Now that you've done all the planning, you set your agenda and defined the norms and you've sent them to all the participants and you have set the stage in the proper manner, starts now the second phase and that is during the meeting so what happens during the meeting the first thing to do is to restate two very important things the meeting objectives and the meeting norms so you have to remind your participants with why are we here um, is it to take a consensus or is it to discuss a certain topic? Whatever it is, you have to clarify that. And also remind your participants of the meeting norms, just to restate the ground rules in a very quick manner. Now, at the beginning of the meeting, important roles should be defined. And this actually should have been done with the agenda. So you have specific roles for people. One person wouldn't have the attention span or the capability to share presentations from speakers, facilitate discussions, to launch polls and to manage the chat. This is just too much for one person to deal with. And that's why it is well encouraged to allocate the following roles. Of course, you will have the host who is the main uh, moderator, a time manager, a facilitator or even more than one to help in, for example, breakout rooms, a technical assistant who deals with technical issues arising from the speakers and participants, a chat manager who would encourage comments and keeps the chat alive by responding quickly and picking up the questions, and even a communication coordinator who would be responsible for live tweeting to increase awareness of the event. So how should we manage the meeting? Here are some important points that we should follow. First of all, you have to be very clear, clear in your statements, clear in your ideas. Clarity should be present in the whole process. Try to keep the meeting short. It's better if it's less than one hour. And a good example would be the Zoom meetings, which we all know to be 45 minutes. If you're um, aiming for discussions, well, you should shorten the length of the presentations. Don't keep long presentations with long discussions. It will not work out well. Always remember to strive for value and simplicity. So you're trying to make the best of things and at the same time without complicating things as well. 
Don't forget to schedule short breaks. These, of course, should be clearly specified in the timetable of the meeting. They are really important for the attendees to take the refreshments. Now we come to the most challenging point of all, and that is engaging participants. In virtual communication, participants are very easily distracted, and also they are very liable to online fatigue. So keeping them engaged and attentive all the time is really a very big um, challenge. So how could we do that? First of all, you should encourage your participants to chat and to ask questions. You could leave the chat function public for all the participants to be able to see everyone's comments, and this way they will be motivated to participate themselves. You can also allow the participants to raise their hand and to give them the floor for a comment or a question, but it should be timed, less than one minute. Make sure they keep it short and straightforward. Launching polls is also a very good way to engage participants. There are many interactive softwares like Kahoot and Mentimeter that you could use. Also dividing them into breakout rooms for a certain period of time for a discussion and then bringing them back to the main meeting could be very engaging. Remember that participants need to feel heard during the event, so if they ask a question, they should receive an answer. Sometimes it's not that easy to control the flow of the session with respect to the time allocated. And to manage this, here are some important points or guidelines. First of all, you need to start and end on time. Secondly, allow only one conversation at one time and refrain from any side talks. Try to always capture the off-topic items and agree to discuss them later at a more appropriate time. You should be present with the people you're meeting with, so put away your phones and other devices during the meeting so as not to be distracted. Finally, everyone is really responsible for helping to stay on topic, so speak up if you feel like we're getting off track. How could we avoid problems and technical issues? You could emphasize the importance of having headphones and possibly a connection to the internet cable rather than Wi-Fi. Also, you should take um, into consideration the different time zones if some of your participants are in other countries. You could also have a five minute buffer time at the beginning of the meeting to properly start the meeting and finally if your meeting is of utmost importance for example if it's a conference and trying to diminish the technical issues you should plan several test runs with the technology and the speakers uh, a few days before uh, the event and also half an hour before the event just to make things perfect now, just before leaving this phase during the meeting, I would like to remind you very much not to share the wrong screen because this really sometimes happens. Do not unmute yourself if you're not intending to speak or if there is background noise around you. And most importantly, don't um, accidentally turn on your webcam if you're not ready for it. Now we have come to the final phase, and that is after the meeting. So what should we do after the meeting? If you recorded your session, you could send it to the participants and also to those who couldn't attend. It's important to summarize your event in a short and yet condensed report and send it to those who are interested. Another important point is that if you are planning an event with multiple sessions, you should suggest an agenda for the next meetings. And this will reduce the questions and it will provide clarity. Now comes the evaluation part. There should be an evaluation of all the positives and negatives of the meeting. And this should really be done by the whole team. Also, you could send a link to a feedback survey to all participants, and this will allow you to learn more for the next events. You should also learn from your own mistakes. Try to keep improving, and if the discussions raise questions and topics, try to keep the discussions going through an online platform of your choice. Finally, you could follow up with the speakers and participants 
to continue collaboration with them. Well, I've reached the end of the video now. I would like to thank you all very much for your kind listening. I hope it was beneficial and maybe added something to you. And uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Take care.